Welcome to season two of Self Careish. It's selfish with care. I'm Megan, your host, and each week I spend about 20 minutes to an hour unpacking different ways to fill your cup after a divorce, or if you're on a dating or self-dating journey. Either way, enjoy and let's get into it. Hi, welcome back to another episode of Self Care Ish. And holy mackerel, it's Saturday. And when I'm recording this, I have just beelined it from a kid's birthday party to get into my room to record because holy, holy, holy mackerel, the craziest dating related thing just happened to me and I had to get this down. So, I was at one of these magical kids' birthday parties where the parents serve beer and alcohol. So it feels a little more like an adult's party while the kids are all, you know, supervised pretty safely. So I arrived and I saw one of my recent hinge dates there with his son. It was a bit wild because we only went on one coffee date. But it turns out both our kids went to the same daycare and we both didn't realize it. And that is the Gold Coast for you. But then there's this extra layer of wildness that just happened is that then later on, my friend arrived. She's a new friend, someone I met through my son's daycare. And yes, you've guessed it. As it turns out, she was my hinge date's (laughs) ex-wife. I know there's only so many single people on the Gold Coast, so this is bound to happen. But has this ever happened to you before? Because this was my first time. And we all had a big laugh and everybody, you know, got on fine. And then it was especially interesting because my ex-husband was there too. So it was me, my former hinge date, his ex-wife, who was also my friend, who had told me over drinks all the stories about, you know, their breakup and her ex-husband. And I didn't even know that it was this guy. It This is wild. It happens, I guess. And my ex-husband all hanging out like one big hingy family. Very weird, very surreal. And if this has happened to you before, let me know. But anyway, I digress. Anyway, all that is not related to this episode. And this is not just any episode. It is a controversial episode or a potentially controversial episode. Just to ring in, you know, the new season was something that might get me some hate messages sent from people. Because this episode is all about drugs, a specific type of drugs, more natural, mushrooms specifically. And I want to stipulate right now, I am not a drug taker. In my 20s, like everybody, I experimented frequently. But as you know, you learn pretty quickly that in order to parent, work, achieve your goals in life, You cannot be semi-functioning through the week with those terrible Tuesday post-MDMA blues. No, you cannot do it, or I couldn't do it. Those days were very, very fun. I'm not going to lie, but what does um, Cher say in Clueless? And I'm really showing my age here. Um, It's one thing to spark up a doobie and get laced at parties. It's another to be totally fried all day. (laughs) So don't worry, this isn't some kind of pro-drugs push. It is, however pro mind and body expansion and I feel like saying everything in this episode has to come with one big caveat and when I say mind expansion I'm not talking about some conspiracy theory everything is rigged kind of approach I'm not talking like that I'm just saying it's about taking your perspective and just shifting it a little just to be more fluid and My story with mushrooms starts about four months into the pandemic. Cut to this. Me, in a small room, a rented Airbnb. Honestly, more like a converted shed that had been architecturally renovated into a rental property at the back of someone else's house. And you see me and I have just consumed a totally heroic amount of psilocybe cumensis, which is a strain of magic mushrooms commonly referred to as golden teacher. Now, in the corner of the room is Emily. Emily is my guide and she was my therapist for the next 
six hours. And it's around about the one hour mark that I just start apologizing profusely to myself, to my past, to my future, and to an ornamental crystal that was sitting beside the bed. Because I suddenly felt connected to all of those things simultaneously. And this, friends, is mushroom therapy. And despite the very, very exciting news that from the, I think, July 1st this year, psychiatrists are now legally able to prescribe psilocybin for mental health treatment. This is still a very, very underground kind of practice. But what's funny is Emily, my guide, who literally travels up and down the Australian coast running these one-on-one therapy sessions with mushrooms, literally just came to me after hosting a session with a former Australian police detective. It was a woman who was trying to heal from PTSD from what she had seen while on the job. So I guess even police officers are doing it, trying to find answers in a place they never thought they would look. Plant medicine. And it is, I swear, it's a whole thing. And if you're sitting there and you're thinking, well, that's great, Megan, but I don't actually know anyone in my social universe who can get me magic mushrooms, I hear you. And that is because there's a famous saying in the plant medicine community, not that I'm part of the community, but someone said it to me, you don't find plant medicine, plant medicine finds you. And this is true for me. And before you turn this pod off in a fit of, oh my God, this girl has gone off the deep end. I thought this was a nice, tidy divorce podcast. Let me just say, I didn't come across this stuff from a sweaty, patchouli-scented stranger in the back room of a nightclub. No, no, no. It actually came to me as a recommendation from a Fortune 500 founder who was in a business coaching community that I was part of back in the day with my ex-husband. So every quarter we would get together and workshop like our respective business issues. And this was during COVID. So everybody's challenges seem to mirror each other. It's like, how do I keep my cortisol levels from exploding and keep my clients and stay sane and maybe rescue my relationship all at once? And you you know, you were there in 2020, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The vibes were off. But then one day I received a DM from one of the trusted members of the group. He was like the jet set kind of member you'd never really expect this kind of message from. And he very tentatively put forward the idea that I might get a lot out of mushroom therapy. It's definitely a more intensive solution than regular therapy and not as loose as taking mushrooms at a party. So it's a bit more formalized, like a happy medium. And that's how I ended up in this room with my guide, Emily, just staring up, fascinated by a ceiling fan. And then laughing hysterically because I thought ceiling fans were pretty silly when you think about them. And that is how my dose came on, subtly. Just a random slew of thoughts that segued into another random thought that went down a tangent of another thought. It was very much kind of like one of those M.C. Escher paintings of all the staircases that go up and down and upside down and nowhere all at once. And while these thoughts were going on and I was breathing very heavily and at the same time I was exhausted and in my body but also outside my body, I start finding the whole situation really preposterous and silly but also incredibly profound. And the best way I can describe it to you is the veil of separation between who you are and what everything else is, is taken away. You become kind of childlike in the sense that your ego is removed and replaced by this incredible sense of wonder and appreciation for a leaf or the sun or for me a freaking ceiling fan and an ornamental crystal that was on the table next to the bed and I started laughing and Emily started laughing and we both laughed these really big belly laughs and they were the kind I hadn't had since the pandemic started and then I say something that ended up sticking with me and stayed with me ever since. I go, sounds kind of lame now, but I say, oh, it's friendly. Like I'm surprised. It's friendly. And it is the it's or the who or what I was referring to that's really stayed with me. And I'm not a formally religious kind of person. I'm 
I guess, spiritual in the sense that I hope that there's something greater out there, but I don't subscribe to any, you know, formal religious belief. But when I shut my eyes, I felt like I was really being shown something. Like my brain synapses were forming connections from one string to another, and it felt like a message. And I know, I know all this, <laughs> I know how this sounds, right? I get it. Don't worry, I get it. But it's one thing to hear a rabbi or a preacher or a priest talk about our connection between people and the planet, but it's a whole other thing to feel it in your body. But then I started to cry. I don't know what it was. I don't know, just with how humbled I was by this mushroom. Like I just felt enormously small and grateful and lucky and spoiled and ungrateful all at once. And then this tumble of apologies started falling out of my mouth, like this mantra of, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, over and over again. And who I'm saying sorry to, I don't really know. You know, friends, family, parents, the planet, anyone I've cut off in traffic. Everyone got an apology all at once that day. And then at the same time that I was doing all this atonement, I felt like there was all this love being sent back to me. And don't worry, I know how all this sounds. And this goes on and on and on for like three hours. So I won't bore you with too many more details. But Emily, my guide, she like basically sits through every tier and private admission that circulates throughout the room. And thankfully, eventually, my old self started floating back. And I remember thinking, God, this sucks. Like you, when it, when it happens to you, you find yourself desperately wanting to hold on to that childlike innocence, but you start to feel your human things come back in, like your ego creeps in and your self-consciousness creeps in, like everything. And you become yourself again with all the myriad of, you know, burdens and issues that we all deal with every day. So for me, when, you know, myself started creeping back and I realized that it was coming back and I laughed because I felt like there I was, I'd been on this truly, truly epic emotional journey. But in reality, I'd only really traveled from one side of the bed to the other. <laughs> it was very, it was a matter of centimeters in reality. But I didn't feel a come down or a negative feeling like if you'd partaken in some drug addled night at a nightclub, you know, like I was just bummed that I couldn't exist in that happy feeling anymore. And then Emily gave me a block of chocolate and we looked through magazines and we did some scrapbooking and we riffed on my lessons and what the mushroom had taught me. And then I'll take a little music break here and I'll get into the whole point of this episode. Stay tuned. All right, I know that was a very, very long preamble, and it has been about two years for me since that session, and I'm not going to sit here and say to you it is a total cure-all, because it is absolutely not. But after that session, I made some pretty significant changes in my life that you would already know about. I got the confidence to move cities. I radically changed my relationship with my husband. We separated, but we stay friendly and amicable or as much as humanly possible, you know how it is. And I do feel an enormous sense of comfort having had that experience and realizing that there is connectivity in everything, what we speak, what we do, and the type of person we choose to embody, it all impacts on other people and who they interact with, and so on and so on and so on. The whole world being this just giant conduit for energy. And now I'm definitely sounding very woo-woo off the deep end. But if you ask me, hey, Megan, do you think I need to find myself a psilocybin practitioner and lock myself away in a room and exercise my demons on shrooms? My answer is absolutely not. If it doesn't come naturally to you, don't chase it you don't want it, you don't need it, you're not ready, or, you know, all of those things are valid reasons, which I totally get. However, what if I came to you with an alternative? One that's completely legal, natural, and harnesses the power of the mushroom, but with zero psychoactive impact, but massive nerve cell regeneration repair instead. That sounds pretty good. And well, guys, what a time to be alive, because 
The technology with nutrient extraction has just improved so much now that you can get even more physical benefits from taking mushroom powders than even eating them raw. If you've been with this show for a little while, you will know that I struggle with a hormonal issue called PMDD. And while I take medication for that, I'm always, always hunting for natural ways to reduce stress and relieve tension and inflammation during that time of the month. That's kind of like my self-care white whale. Like I'm always trying to find the perfect solution that isn't just popping a pill which is fine too please 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 take your medication but for instance the data behind lion's mane mushroom is insane like in clinical trials scientists have seen basically the reformation of new blood vessels and a reduction in depressive symptoms of particularly perimenopausal women, while a study conducted in Japan found men and women who had, say, mild cognitive impairment, who received one gram of lion's mane mushroom three times a day, over 16 weeks saw an increase in cognitive function. And that's just lion's mane. I mean, there's also Cordyceps militaris, which I know sounds like something out of The Last of Us for all the gamer nerds out there. But Cordyceps militaris actually improves energy levels, fights inflammation, and also has proven to assist in cancer treatment. And overall, this is the fun fact, improve your sex life, just as a little extra bonus. And I guess the reason I'm pushing so hard on this is pretty simple, because I know self-care started as a divorce podcast after all, and when you're forced just to rely on you you realize that your self-care needs to push beyond just a Pilates class once a week or a skincare routine before you go to bed. It's a time when you need to stay sharp and motivated and happy and joyful all without three coffees a day, which actually only serves to make you nervy and aggravated anyway. We don't want that. You've got to look after yourself from the inside out because the benefits show up in your work your relationships, and yes, your body. And hey, you deserve it just in general because life is tough and, you know, why not arm yourself with something that makes you feel good? Which is why if you tap the link in the profile, you will get 20% off your first order at Shroomly. And this isn't an ad that's just a regular ad. I reached out to these guys directly to create this offer for you because I had such a life-changing experience with mushrooms. And I think Everyone here can benefit from them, even if you don't partake in anything hallucinogenic, of course. So just to reinforce, shroomly mushrooms are not psychoactive, but they are proven to work when it comes to improving endurance, energy, focus, and positivity, which is, I guess, something I think we all really need at the moment. And just talking about this now kind of makes me want to have an extra dose. It's a mushroom powder. It doesn't taste bad. And it's just really easy to take every morning and incorporate into your morning routine. So if you head to shroomly.com.au and use the code selfcarishpod 20 you'll receive 20% off. And that is quite hefty. And I recommend the lion's mane to start with, but if you're a fitness person, you are gonna love the cordyceps militaris. They're 100% CFDA certified organic. They're dairy free, they're gluten free, they're vegan friendly, they're zero sugar, they're non-GMO, and they're made here in Australia. Like it cannot get any better. And this marks the start of me giving you exclusive deals on self-care experiences that I've been able to negotiate that you're just not going to get anywhere else. And we're kicking this off with shroomly.com.au using the code selfcarishpod20 just to reinforce it there. But give it a shot. Try it. I promise you it's worth it because you're worth it. And maybe think of this episode as your little reminder that when it comes to your health, it's important to get a little selfish. It's only you looking after you. Okay. Thank you so much for tuning in for this particular episode of self Carish. But P.S. P.S. Very important news. It is all deals all the time here at the moment. And I know that I mentioned last week that subscribers will receive exclusive offers in their inbox. But this means only you will get the discount if you are subscribed to self Carish. So you just head to selfcare-ish or selfcare-ish.com.au to get that cash off and start treating your skin your mind and everything in between just 
all good things being sent to you. Hit that subscribe button and I promise I will not spam you. I'll only fill your inbox with good vibes and discounts. And I also really love hearing your voice. So you can also leave me a voicemail there on the website. Have your say on anything we've discussed in this or previous episodes. Or if you just want to share memes, you can follow us on Instagram at self Podcast. I'm on TikTok at Megan Lonrigan. All the links are in the show notes and I'm really glad you're here. See you next week.